Welcome, ladies, to another episode. Always so grateful that you're joining me. And it's our first episode of June. It's heating up around here. Kids are out of school. So I'm just sending you all the love as you establish new routines and dive into perhaps maybe a slowdown for some of you, maybe not. But this episode, I think, is going to be just spot on amazing timing for you to think about how your systems in your house run and specifically around meal planning. It's crazy. So I've been in business for years now, and this is still the single greatest question I get. And I've recorded some similar episodes, not exactly this content, but I was like, duh, why haven't I called out this specific content and really talked about meal planning hacks or the things that I think are the the simple ways to make it stick. But it's interesting, right? That after all of this time, I have conversations with ladies quite frequently and they say, you know, I felt really good when I was meal planning, or I noticed, you know, I had the most energy when I was consistently showing up to meal plan or everything would be fine if I could just meal plan. I'm like, Hmm, okay. What's the one thing that would change everything? meal planning. (laughs) But I believe the reason we don't have success is because we make it too freaking complicated. And there is a lot of resources out there that exist in the meal planning world. And I'm going to be talking about a new one that we created. However, what I see is that often these tools do not have your health in mind. They are not educational tools and they're not easily repeatable. And I'm going to talk about today um, just a couple things to understand around meal planning. I'm going to be talking about our new meal planning tool and giving you seven hacks and they're baby hacks. Um, I think a few of them are pretty game changer hacks that are going to shift the way you think about meal planning. So Uh, I encourage you to maybe take some notes, grab a pen and paper. And if not, you can go back to the show notes. Don't worry. I highlight them specifically and also go grab the meal planner because it basically forces you into doing these things already. That's why I made it. It's kind of interesting because I've been thinking about like, how can I, not everybody uh, is going to have, you know, be ready for coaching, right? That may not be Uh, something that everybody shows up to do. However, we all have to eat and we all want a strategy that's simple. And so I was really thinking about how can I serve a lot of ladies and show them how to plan their meals around their life in a way that has their health in mind. And today's hacks are kind of built into this planner. So first I want to acknowledge something. I hear from so many ladies that the place they go to hunt down their meals is Pinterest. And while I love me a good old pin, here are some things that you need to know about Pinterest. Pinterest is an underground platform that drives traffic to websites to make money, myself included. I put pins out there so people come visit my podcast and my content because I want to coach a lot of ladies. And you also have to know that people that put out their recipes are also doing it for the exact same purpose. And so I had a client and who really inspired this episode recently. And she's like, okay, I, I struggle because when meal planning comes up, I end up on Pinterest. I'm in Pinterest an hour or two hour later than all the shit I wanted to do with planning never got done. And I have no more time left. And I said, why do you need to go to Pinterest? And she's like, I don't know what to cook. And I said, okay, so then you got to Pinterest and did that solve it? She's like, actually, it didn't, it made me more confused. And then I was clicking on, you know, because with her, we're working on consuming more protein, which is 100% of the women I work with, which is something I built into this planner as well. And so she sent me a recipe and she's like, you know, can you just help me look at this recipe? It says protein packed, I forget what it was. And she's like, I'm putting this in my menu because it's protein packed. And I said, well, how do you know that? She's like, well, the pin says it. And I was like, oh yeah, it says it, but is it? Because the bloggers are not people who actually know about nutrition often. So they say it's protein packed because that's trendy and they know people need to consume protein, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's protein packed. It could be protein in it. If you put peanut butter in something, it'll have protein in it, right? These are the claims of things like nut butters or things with nuts and seeds in them. And they claim protein packed, which is a bunch of BS. 
It's that there are protein in it. So this is why Pinterest doesn't necessarily have the right answers for you. And it can be this hole that sucks you in. And I am here to help you with that today. And part of what I've built into the planner is 50 recipes that are tried and true. Why do you need more than that, right? Sure, use those for a while. And if you need to find something else, you can add to them. But the point being is, and I'm gonna talk to you about like just numbers later on in the episode uh, around looking at how many recipes do I really need? Uh, Because I could have put 200 recipes in the planner, but I didn't on purpose because then I would have become Pinterest. And so- This was the catalyst for me creating this episode and for years of discussion around meal planning with ladies, which is a fraction of my much larger grounding day process. So when you hear me talk about grounding day, I'm not just talking about meal planning. That looks like the end product, but there's a lot of stuff that goes before it, which has to do with carving space out for yourself, aligning your priorities, living what you say you're going to do for yourself. So let's dive into the milk and cookies of the episode. So hack number one around meal planning is to totally keep it simple. This is when you see me share my Sunday episode or my Sunday pictures on Instagram. And if you don't follow me there, I would love for you to come follow me at a walk my way, a W a L K M Y W a Y. I take a picture of my law of attraction planner where I pan my plan, my meals. Very seldom does it say a recipe. It might say like sloppy Joe's. And or ground turkey sloppy joes. And that is a small recipe. It's also in the planner, by the way. And then sweet potatoes and then, you know, asparagus. But what I'm keeping continuity around is protein, carb, fat, veggie. Most ladies I begin work with aren't really even sure how to do that in a meal. And this is the most basic and simple approach. If you go grab a lasagna recipe, Nine times out of 10, there is not a protein in there. And so this is how we begin to tweak and adjust. Pinterest and other recipes, they're beautiful. They're amazing. And I love to cook too, but I don't have the time for an hour to an hour and a half cooking extravaganza in my kitchen every night. A lot of times I've got about 10 minutes to get the the food prepped before we head off to an evening activity. And I know a lot of you are experiencing that in that same season of life, or maybe you just want to be simple. A lot of ladies say, you know, I don't love to cook or I don't want to be in the kitchen quite off, you know, so frequently. And I get you. Um, there's times there's there's other things I'd like to do with my time, too. But part of this is just keeping it simple and just saying, you know, I'm going to do shrimp, rice, um, broccoli, and I'm going to cook it in oil. And there's my protein, carb, fat, veggie. So just keeping it simple is such a key to long term success and to feeling good in your body. The next hack is this plan and label your meals around your life. When you grab the planner, and I'll tell you where to grab the planner shortly, you will actually see there's a drop down that does this for you. It says easy, average, or busy. Because what I want you to think about is this, if this is the busiest night of the week, We don't want to create the most elaborate recipe. Do that on a Saturday or Sunday night where you have time to be in the kitchen and turn on music and cultivate an an experience. I want all of those things. And also, I know that in order for me to consistently show up and feel good with food, I need to plan my meals around my life. This is where the wheels fall off all the time. Girls are not thinking about syncing those two things, and there ends up being like a lack of congruency around that. And they feel frustrated and they're like, well, screw it. Like, let's get Chick-fil-A. All right. Hack number three is double prep your dinner. Don't think that meal planning has to be this elaborate four hour process on the weekends. That's not my style. It could totally be your style. And some ladies love that, but here's why I don't love it personally. I don't like eating leftovers like too many nights or when they've lost kind of their mojo by midweek. And I don't love to spend four hours on the weekend doing that. Um, Instead, I want to just be a little bit like, you know, I I like to have my time um, differently. And then the other piece is I also love to uh, have um, the weekend time to just do staples. And so I will, um, just do hard boiled eggs and usually just grab like some cut up fresh veggies and fruits. And that's it. That's all the prepping. So it takes me less than an hour. And then during the week I'm double prepping my dinners. So I am absolutely 
um, uh, going in and, you know, let's just say I'm, I'm making again, sloppy joes, you know, which normally we'd eat about a pound and a half of ground turkey or ground beef, I make three pounds, right? And I make several sweet potatoes so that that ends up being dinner the next day or lunch the next day, depending on the night. So it does not have to be a five-hour routine. Make a few staples. And then if you're already going to be in the kitchen for dinner, then just duplicate the amount or double the amount, triple the amount even so that you're ready for the next day. Hack number four. This is a huge one, and this is part of that grounding day process that I teach, and that is now an automated, pro automated program, by the way, that you can buy, um, where I walk you through all of the steps. It's a pretty awesome course. Um, but the big piece is to plan and create, plan your meals and then create your gro grocery shopping list at the same time. And this is a bigger part of the grounding day process. And the planner, by the way, it allows you to plan and it populates your grocery shopping list. So when you grab from the drop down and let's say you plan, you know, eggs, it puts it right into the grocery shopping list. It does it for you because this is where I see the wheels fall off. We do the planning and then we show up at the grocery store and we're like, oh crap, like what did I have in mind? And so this is a big shift that I think is such a save, a, a, both a saving of time for ladies and also helps to keep consistent habit around meal planning ahead. Hack number five, get your family bought to buy in as well. So this I say often is it's not my responsibility to plan all the meals. I want people in my house to tell me what they want to. So I ask my husband, my kids, even if you have small children, if it's just you, then you have also a little bit more flexibility to not cook as often, but ask them what they want. Let them be included in the conversation. So if they select at least one meal and let's say you have two family members or three family members, that's fewer menu items that you can select or have to come from your brain. And that also they get excited when they're like, oh yeah, I picked, you know, um, the stir fry this week or whatever the case is. Hack number six, build in leftover nights. I can't say this enough. Don't let the food that you make go to like the graveyard in the back of the fridge where it gets gross and nasty. Plan for like a end of the week at least or midweek. Usually I do like a Thursday night after I've cooked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where I'm like catching it. And we call it just like a free for all night. Like, okay, here's what's available. I lay it out and they get creative and I get creative on how to piece it together. Sometimes there's perfectly whole meals and other times not so much. And it is such a, a way to save you from wasting money first off. And it gives you one of those few nights off the hook where you're not cooking. And we look so forward to it. So that was hack number six. Hack number seven is we live in a world now where done for you ingredients are a thing. You can go and get any kind of chopped vegetable already done. And like from cauliflower rice, Rice broccoli. I even see spaghetti squash out there. I mean, you can go to Fry's, Trader Joe's, and you can buy already seasoned, you know, chicken ready to go, just microwave or just air fry. So give yourself permission to, to buy done for you ingredients. You don't have to be a superhero and chop everything fresh. You can do that in the future. And right now where you're in the process of shifting or maybe in the season of life that's more demanding, just give yourself permission to go buy done for you ingredients. I hear from all the women's like, oh, I am, I have shame that I even would do that. Like there's a reason they created them, right? They get them. So take advantage. And oftentimes one little place to go is they have like a clearance veggie section. You can even save a few bucks because some of those things spoil faster. So if you catch them at the right time, then you could, you know, have them at a cheaper cost because done for you is slightly more expensive. Although oftentimes I don't actually see the pricing to be too much more. So big picture, when we talk about my meal planning technique and when you buy the planner, one of the things that I always am looking at, like, let's just look at these numbers really quickly, because this blows, you know, the mind of a lot of people when we just make it simple. I say at max, make five meals a week. Then one night is eating out, typically takeout or, you know, something for my family is either takeout or just a fast casual. Um, and then one night is uh, leftovers. And even if you're not a family that eats out, you could do two nights of leftovers. So if you're cooking five times a week out of a seven day week, that's 
five times four, that's 20 meals a month that you would make, give or take a week, right? Could be more like 25, depending on the month. So that means if you cooked 20 meals in that month and you repeated that month every, you know, just over and over throughout the year, you would only have each of those recipes 12 times out of 365 days. Like let that sink in. 12 out of 365. Like if we actually do that math real quick and look at what that is, that's like tiny, tiny percentage of the year. And so this is kind of how the meal planner is built. We look at it a week by week basis and you can even clone the tabs. So, so when you purchase, I actually teach you how to do this. And that meal planner allows you to clone the tabs. You can make four tabs for four different weeks and then refer to that. The grocery shopping list would be populated for you and everything. And this just reduces the overwhelm. It's done for you. Reference it, make it simple. And to me, just seeing that number and that big picture of it's really not about the meal planning. It's the process, right? I don't know how to think about the recipe. And a lot of ladies will just say, I don't know what to cook. I sit down and I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. And so the beautiful thing about the planner is <clears throat> If you go, you can go to the page, by the way, feelamazingnaked.com forward slash meal planner, and you'll actually see a behind the scenes tour. So I actually walk you through how to use it so you can see it. But we divide out three meals and a couple snacks, and then each meal is divided out with this protein, carb, fat, and veggie philosophy, our core four philosophy, we call it. And it gives you a drop down. So it also helps you learn. So if you're not sure what constitutes a protein, carb, fat, and veggie, when you click on protein, it will drop down and it will give you a whole list of proteins. And that also inspires planning because you're like, oh yeah, yogurt protein. I could totally do that with breakfast and then maybe add X, Y, Z or eggs. Yes, sweet eggs, egg whites. And so it will allow that to be auto-populated right into the grocery shopping list. And so it teaches you as you go. So while these are hacks that you can do totally solo, when you go purchase the meal planner, which by the way, is $7, it's as much as a Vente Starbucks, and it's going to last you the rest of your life. And it's going to be the best $7. It's a no brainer. And I priced it like that. A lot of girls have said things like, Seriously, how did you only charge $7? Or like, this is the best $7 I spent. Like, it makes me think about my health. It, you know, all these things. And that's because I wanted to make it that way, a complete no brainer for you. So you could have a tried and true strategy and be prepared. Like when you go to check out the other pieces I made or the other questions I often get, I don't know how to eat out or I'm not sure what to get or what happens on those emergency nights where I don't have a meal on plan and, or, um, you know, a meal planned, or I don't know what to do. So I actually created a bonus guide and it walks you through, I think it's 10 to 15 of my favorite restaurants to eat out at. And I teach you some things and some ideas on how to order. There's also a bonus training where I go to my child favorite childhood restaurant. And I sit down at the table and walk you through my thought process and things to think about when eating out. This is one of the favorite videos inside the group program and I'm sharing it outward. <clears throat> the other thing it has is those emergency meal ideas, quick meal ideas, literally pictures of the ingredients so you know what to look for. And I recommend just having two of these on hand in your freezer at all times because then it will reduce that desire to go out for takeout or order takeout rather or go grab something or end up um, ordering a pizza in, right? Because two things happen then. We spend more money than we need to, and also it doesn't support our goals. So we teach you kind of this emergency meal prep. And there's also a live or a bonus training, not a live training, a recorded training in there that teaches this core four philosophy. And I walk you through me live, creating a recipe and all that you know goes into that recipe creation. So this whole process is going to help you shift from this kind of rocket science that uh, we often think meal planning is to showing you how simple it can be and just taking back ownership over that process. And I think now is such a beautiful time to practice. Maybe things are going to slow down a little bit for you. Some people experience such a pickup, maybe um, 
this is just such a great opportunity for you to see how simple, simple, simple this steps can be. So I hope that those seven hacks speak to you. And I'd love to hear more. If you have a meal planning question or you find that there's still one thing that you're rubbing up against when it comes to meal planning, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram or send me an email at support at feelamazingnaked.com. And to go purchase the meal planner, uh, I'm telling you, it's it's worth the Vente Starbucks that you could pass on for one week to purchase the meal planner or that one meal out or that one thing in your Amazon cart that's not going to keep on giving. Like this meal planner is like the Costco membership. You buy it and it just keeps on giving over and over and over. And you can buy it, purchase the meal planner at feelamazingnaked.com forward slash meal planner. And I'm so excited for you to go out and use it and implement it in your own life and take these hacks and apply them over and over again. So you're no longer being stuck on Pinterest for hours or stuck in overwhelm or analysis paralysis around the simple task of meal planning.